Hi, it's Marva Riley. Just kind of wanted to hop on a little bit and do a quick video because um, somebody, my neighbor shared with me that our neighbor who is in her late 40s uh, committed suicide and um, just a lot going on in her life. Then I was on Facebook and I saw where one of my friends shared uh, the passing away of a young lady who was apparently a popular celebrity. I'm not quite sure who it is, but she was young and uh, she jumped off a tall building and, and uh, committed suicide. Now, so many people get on the bandwagon with this kind of thing and they, they act shocked and that kind of stuff. But I'm not sure if you all know that suicide and homicide is a is number two second cause of death among young people ages 15 to 25. Uh, the number one is accidents. But suicide is right up there. Many thousands of young people take their lives each year for whatever reason. But then that's the young people. They might shoot themselves or cut their wrist, hang themselves. Um, very sad. But then it occurred to me that the young, the middle, the older, are committing suicide in other ways on a daily basis. For example, drug abuse, whether it's legal drugs being prescribed by doctors or illegal drugs being bought off the street as they call it street drugs is so common nowadays so common it seems as though so many people are on rocks and ice and cocaine i mean some of them <laughs> i was not even aware of but i did work in the psych unit at a large hospital in Broward, and there were so many young, middle and older people coming in with drug overdose. Some of them had to be on life support until they recovered if they did. But it's very common. The drug of food, where people are so stressed out and depressed losing family members, losing their house, losing their jobs, that they're turning to food as their drug. Very real. Mental health is very, very real. So many are going through depression and anxiety. They can't sleep. They have to take Xanax and Valium and some kind of a anxiolytic every day just to keep them calm antidepressants just to keep them calm and relaxed so they don't go out of their minds so many are on sleeping pills if they don't take sleeping pills every day they cannot sleep these are the legal drugs that your physician can prescribe but then there's the other side the illegal drugs that people are getting or kids or young people or middle adults or, or older adults are spending their entire social security check disability check paycheck to soothe themselves and escape the reality, whatever reality it is, with these drugs. But there is hope. There is hope. There are many, many centers and 800 numbers that one can call to speak with a psychologist or a counselor who will help you, help you to perhaps find some help there are many books that are written um, to help you. If you go on YouTube, there's so many psychologists and counselors on YouTube that are always up, uploading videos to help you, crisis centers to help you. Mental health is real. And we also need to listen to people and be able to read the subtle signs that, they, that our family members, that our children, that our spouses, that our family members, that our friends, that our coworkers might be showing that they're depressed and they feel hopeless. 
it doesn't make a person weak when they feel depressed and hopeless. Sometimes they just need someone to hold their hands and to listen as they go through this valley experience. Sometimes it's transient. Sometimes it lasts for a long time and the holidays don't help. So I encourage you to be mindful, listen to the subtle signs of your children and your parents and your loved ones. And listen when they try to talk. Don't be so quick to talk, but listen. Because oftentimes when folks get to the point where they actually carry out the suicide, they were at a dark spot and needed someone there to be with them. But sometimes we're so busy that we don't pick up on the signs or we're so busy dealing with our stuff that we don't have time for our loved ones. But mental health is so real. I've gone through major depression where I felt like taking my life. Um, I covered that in my first book, Eat, Sleep, Meditate, A Nurse's Guide to Health. I was hopeless. I, I felt like taking my life. I didn't want to live. I went through divorce. Um, I had a lot of health issues. I was depressed. I was anxious. I could not sleep. I had med menopausal issues. I was scared. But a lot of times I didn't share. I kept a lot of that inside of me, which is not good. Find a friend, call a crisis center, go see a psychiatrist, go see a psychologist, go see your doctor. Keep checking, keep seeking, you will find help. But don't take your life. Don't take your life. But I don't condemn anyone who takes their life either. Because it's not about that. It's about me being here to encourage you and to listen to you when you have a concern, when you have a problem, when you need a helping hand, when you need a shoulder to cry on. Find someone that you can depend on to be a friend when you need them. And some people need drugs. Some, some people just need drugs, even if it's temporarily until you get over that hump. Some people have to be on some kind of a drug all their life to keep them a little bit calm. But oftentimes you're able to get off these drugs as you embrace some healthy lifestyles like eating healthy foods. Because when you eat unhealthy foods, it does contribute to your state of mind. Like sugar will, will, will take you on a high, but it also plummets you. So eating healthy does help your mental health. Exercise. I have a friend that I follow on um, Instagram and he, he says, I mean, he's an avid exercise person. He says, you don't want to be around me if I don't exercise. I'm a beer. Well, yes. Exercise helps you to burn that steam, to blow off that energy and to deal with the excess stress. It's also very important to get sunlight. Sunlight helps with the mood and um, it just lifts the spirit fresh air and um, what helped me a lot too during my time of major depression was journaling. In fact, do I have any of my old journals here in front of me on my book? Well, perhaps not. I think I have it. I have them elsewhere. I have books, piles of books where I would write gratitude journal every single day. And my gratitude journals were not always about giving thanks, giving thanks, giving thanks. Sometimes in my in my journaling, I would rant and rave and I would fuss at God. For example, I would talk about what was going wrong and then I would turn around and list five things or so for which I was grateful. The thing is that when you start focusing on what's going good in your life, like having breath and life and health, um, a roof over your head, family, friends, a job, you start naming those blessings one by one, it shifts you from a, an energy of complaining to one of gratitude. And that helps with the mental state and it also helps with the physical state. So gratitude journaling, powerful, powerful, powerful. Just find a book, a cheap book, a $1 composition book, and just every day Write five, at least five things for which you're grateful. And if all you can write are that you woke up that morning, that you can breathe, that you move your bowel, for example, that you have water to drink, 
that you have some food on the table. There you go, you have five. And if you have to write the same five, fine, for several days. Eventually you'll see that you will come up with more and more things for which you're grateful and that will shift the energy to a po more positivity and help you to better to be better able to cope with the stresses of life. So that's eating healthy, exercise, just go out and walk, get some fresh air, sunlight, water helps also as you're hydrated, you're in a better mood, you'll feel better, your digestive tract will work better because when your di digestive system is off, it also affects, um, affects your mood. And find a hobby, find something that you love doing and do it. Find something. I love to write. I like to encourage people. Um, um, I like to, I run a Facebook health group, The Doctor and You. I like to talk to people, meet people. I like to exercise, all those things. I have a, a business that I run and I enjoy uh, those things. I enjoy chatting with my grandkids on FaceTime, all those things. I like to go out with my with my hobby. Um, I like nature. Find things that you like to do and do them regularly. And that will also help you with your mental health. But mental health is real. Mental health is real. So, you know, let's breathe a word of prayer for those that are suffering from mental health. So does those that have lost their loved ones uh, to suicide or or, you know, by whatever means, um, we will honor their spirit and bear them up, bear the family in prayer. But take care of your, your mental health just as much as you take care of your physical health and take care of your spiritual health. Prayer and meditation. Oh, powerful. You need to spend time by yourself, just by yourself. Look within. Connect with the spirit within you. Breathe and just be still. Like in the first thing in the morning, try to spend 10, 15 minutes by yourself, having a cup of whatever you drink, coffee, tea, water, and just center yourself and be still and prepare yourself mentally and spiritually and physically to meet the day. Your health is your wealth, my friends. I've been sick physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. I, I'm not there. But every day I have to make an effort that I want to be holistically well. And I make the necessary decisions and choices to ensure that I remain healthy. Can never take our health and well-being for granted. This is Marva Riley. I encourage you, hang in there, find a friend, and be a friend. All right? Take care now.